another piece that oh, I believe is a very important uh, publication. It actually um, addresses the long-term effect of a trial that appears now way in the past. The Austrian breast and colorectal cancer study group trial number eight, which was a trial of uh, hormone treatment in two different uh, regimen for postmenopausal patients uh, with hormone receptor positive breast cancer, excluding patients who would receive chemotherapy, excluding, for example, patients with high grade tumors. So, this is a three and a half thousand patient cohort originally um, of patients with low and intermediate risk of recurrence. And this started, in fact, 20 years ago. Um, in selecting this group of very low risk patients or lower than average risk patients. Um, the other task we back then set out uh, to investigate was, do we really need to provide adjuvant radiotherapy to every patient with breast conservation? Um, uh, that was a very disputed, very controversial issue back then. I think nowadays it is still disputed and still controversial because it's uh, uh, unfortunately a little bit a matter of ideology between surgeons and radiotherapists, and uh, that's not the way it should be handled. But it's and there is a number of studies addressing this in trying, and there is no question that the standard of care is breast conservation needs adjuvant radiotherapy. The question is, if your relapse risk, particularly your local relapse risk, is very low, is the benefit of a magnitude that would justify the side effects radiotherapy inevitably also has? It, this is usually not severe. It is sometimes in the aesthetic or, or uh, cosmetic uh, realm, um, but some patients experience long-term side effects or side effects starting 10 years after the surgery and they are healthy and they consider themselves cured, uh, and rightfully so. And so I think it is of value in, in the quest to de-escalate treatment for patients who do not really benefit or do only benefit in a minute way that does not justify the side effects. So what, was, what we did um, back then, we identified 869 uh, patients with a very low risk profile. So that was patients uh, with tumors uh, smaller than two centimeters, no high grade as in the study overall, and, and uh, no negative disease. And these patients were invited to commit themselves to a second randomization, so not only the main trial question of five years of tamoxifen versus the sequence of tamoxifen followed by an astrosol. Um, and so uh, in, in the, having this second randomization, we basically have uh, defined a, a cohort of approximately 430, 440 patients each in these two groups. One of them uh, would receive radiotherapy, standard of care after breast conservation, and the other one would be spared the radiotherapy. The primary results of this were published uh, six, seven, eight years ago, and it showed two things. First, eventually, I don't like to say it, but I have to say it, we failed with this selection of uh, age, tumor size, grade, to securely identify a subpopulation of breast cancer patients who would not benefit from radiotherapy. So in fact, the original results at five years was a local relapse rate of about 5% for patients who did not receive the radiation and 0.5%, which is only 10%, for those patients who were regularly irradiated. However, the second observation is that this 5% is a very low rate of local regional relapse, and some could view it as 
let's say, justifiable or affordable in terms of relapse risk for patients, particularly if they are um, rather elderly or in a frail situation where visiting the radiotherapy every day would be a huge log logistic burden. Um, so I think with that original study, we didn't really resolve um, the issue, but we added evidence to, um, well, yes, obviously it's not so easy to define a subgroup of patients who can be spared radiotherapy. Um, on the other hand, so statistically that was failing. On the other hand, the percentages of local relapse were in uh, a range that was so reasonable that some physicians and patients may say, okay, I, I, I can take this risk and I rather spare myself the, the sequelae of, of the treatment. So and what we did now is uh, we, we updated this uh, after median follow-up of almost 10 years. Um, in order to see whether in the long term something would change, um, and I have to say the team within ABCSG uh, who did this needs to be congratulated because you know pulling this sometimes very old data from from the records is a is a huge task, and they did a, a wonderful job. Um, and the short summary of of that ten year update is that the initial results were confirmed. There still was a significant difference. Uh, in local therapy, um, results in local recurrence for survival. <clears throat> in the irradiated group, that was 97.5%, and in the non-irradiated group, it was 92.4%, which is a significant difference and eventually confirms that that type of definition of low risk is not good enough to, to safely identify individual patients who can be spared. That doesn't mean that another, I'm, I'm still convinced that there are patients out there who can get away without radiotherapy, but um, at least with the methods we did back then, uh, we did not identify this in a way that it can be recommended safely to all patients. Um, and this is, I think also, reassuring for the validity of the original result, which is not so easy because uh, the definition of local relapse as compared to a new primary sometimes is not so easy um, and it's a, a complex type of clinical research. And it's reassuring to after 10 year follow up, which is now almost or actually more than 20 years after the original trial started, um, is reassuring that uh, this is high quality research and, um, and, and I think that's very important also for not only for the scientific community but also for patients to at times demonstrate that yes, what we, what we identify in innovative uh, research will hold true also in the long run.